Professional designers need professional tools, but Figma has turned the idea of a professional tool on its head in just the last couple of years. After Figma's Config 2023 conference, I'm convinced that what it means to be a UI UX and web designer is changing. You're gonna be able to work from your laptop or tablet on a truly professional level with just a Wi-Fi connection. And more than that, designers and developers are really becoming more closely intertwined and we might even start to have a hard time telling them apart. Here's what Figma announced that made me start thinking about this. First, dev mode. Dev mode is a new feature that allows designers to view and interact with the underlying code of their designs. It can be helpful for debugging designs, understanding how they're implemented, and handing off designs to developers. To use dev mode, simply open up a Figma file and click on the dev mode button in the toolbar. This will open a new window that shows the underlying code of your design. You can then use the editor to make changes to the code, or you can use the debugging tools to help you step through the code and see how it works. Next, variables. Variables creates a new way to store reusable values in Figma. They can be used to dynamically update different properties of elements in your Figma design, such as text, colors, and dimensions. This makes it so much easier to create more complex and interactive prototypes. To create a variable, just select the element that you want to control with the variable and click on the variables button in the toolbar. This will open a dialog box where you can enter the name of the variable and the value that you want to store. Once you've created a variable, you can use it to update the properties of elements that you selected. For example, if you selected a variable for color and set its value to hashtag FFFFFF, you can then use that variable to set the color of the element to white. Which brings me to advanced prototyping. Figma's prototyping capabilities have been further enhanced with new features like the ability to set different variables, triggering more than one action with a single action, and using conditional logic. Like I mentioned, the ability to create variables makes it even easier to create more interactive and complex prototypes. For example, you could create a variable called progress and use it to track the progress of a user through a prototype. You could then use this variable to trigger different actions such as changing the text of a button or displaying a new screen. The ability to trigger multiple actions within a single action is super useful for prototyping as well. For example, you could create a single action that first changes the color of an element and then triggers a new screen. Just one action actually performs several different tasks. Another thing that can make your prototypes even more powerful is conditional logic. For example, you could create a condition that checks whether the value of a variable is equal to 100 and if that condition is true, then you can trigger an action, such as changing the color of an element. Figma also introduced some other kind of quality of life updates that are pretty exciting. Auto layout has been updated to make it even easier to create responsive designs. The font picker has been updated so that it makes it so much easier to choose fonts and actually preview what they would look like. And the file browser has been updated so it's a lot easier to find and manage your files. It seems Figma is really helping blur the line between designer and developer in a good way for designers to be empowered with some knowledge of code and developers to be empowered with some knowledge of design and keeping up with trends. Speaking of which, check out this tutorial if you want to learn how to get this trendy mesh gradient look for your next project.